And we are live. Welcome, Mystery and Thriller fans. I'm your on-air host, Sarah DeVello, and I am thrilled to be hosting Kara Ruda all the way from California here to talk about her brand new red hot book, The Next Wife. As you can see, I'm in Next Wife costume. Kara, welcome. Tell us about The Next Wife. Well, Sarah, thank you. As you can see, I'm in my next wife costume too. It's actually a great costume. Everyone can do it. It's just black sunglasses. So black sunglasses and a nice red lip. Right. As you can you see, have like the Canada. lipstick part down. Yeah, you look great. You look perfect, Sarah. I uh yeah, I don't have like I don't just don't have red lipstick. I should get some for this, but I don't. But yes, so thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. And yes, as you said, the next wife is domestic suspense and that that means it's really hard to talk about without giving anything away. <laughs> but I can say it's about Kate and John Nelson, who built a business together called Event Co. And they have a beautiful daughter, Ashlyn, who's now 20. But the problem is Kate and John's marriage were, you know, uh, broke up because he fell in love with his executive assistant, Tish, who he married. So when the story opens, you're at the Event Co. company's IPO with all of these characters. So you've got the first wife, the second wife, the daughter, and John, the husband. So that's kind of all I can say. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what could what could go wrong, Kara? What, what could go right, wrong? what could possibly go wrong with any of that? So yeah, and it, it, it's fun, I hope to read because it's told from the perspectives of all of the main characters. So John gets to tell you his side of the story and Kate and Tish and Ashlyn all do too. <gasps> Ooh, well, I can't wait to get into every delicious detail, but I just want to pause and welcome everyone who's watching on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome, friends. Welcome, everybody. It's great to have you here on a Tuesday as we dish the dirty details about all things mysteries, thrillers, and the next wife. Um, if you've been here before, you know the drill. And if you're you're new, welcome. We're so thrilled to have you. You found us. You found your people. Let's nerd out about mysteries. Um, so here's how it works. Every Tuesday, I present you with two fabulous featured authors, and you get to ask them anything. So you can ask Kara about her writing, about mysteries, about thrillers, about this next wife premise, about the first wife, the second wife, Tish, Ashlyn. We need to know everything, Kara. Um, so get those questions going in the comments and I will get right over to them. Uh, welcome Leslie. Welcome Anissa. Welcome back Anissa. Welcome Gail. Welcome Susie Q. Welcome Sharon. Welcome Andrew. Welcome Drew. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Get your questions going um, in the comments. Anissa is saying hello, Sarah and Kara. Hey, Anissa. Great to have you. Leslie also saying it's me again. Leslie, top community member. Welcome back, girl. Gail, hi. Good to have you. Sharon saying hello from Minnesota. Yeah, tell us where you're watching. I'm in Boston. How about you, Kara? I am in Laguna Beach, California. Ooh, I bet your weather's better than it is in Boston today. It's a <laughs> balmy 48 degrees. Well, oh, let's no. get right into the questions. Drew would like to know, how do you find your stories? Drew, you're clearly one of us because you got a dog as your profile pick. Welcome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I find my stories in the most fun way. They just pop into my head as a character and usually a character and a title, which is super fun. And that's how they've always started. Knock on wood. I hope they continue to do so. Excellent. So which character was it? Was it Tish? Was it Ashlyn? Was it Kate Nelson, the first wife? Was it John? Who popped in there first? In this case, it was Tish. She popped in raring and ready to go. So the second wife. The, the husband stealing hot hussy popped in there first. Good to know. <laughs> she is not a hussy. She would not call herself a hussy. She's just a better fit for John Nelson. That's what she would tell you. Okay. Who's read it and is team Kate? Who here is team Tish? Let's get it going in the comments. <laughs> Drew is saying, LOL. Drew, we're laughing with, with you. Anissa, <laughs> saying, she's watching from South Carolina. Anissa, welcome. We literally got people from, from the East to the West and the Middle the South. Great to have you. Um, Sharon is saying the book cover is killer. Sharon, I see what yeah. you did there. I'm picking up what you're putting down and I'm loving it. The cover <laughs> is killer because guess what? I like glamour girl sunglasses and a 
red lip. Tell us the story of this cover, Kara. Did you have input into it? Is it number one? Is it number 101? Is it somewhere in between? Give us the details, the dirty details. You know, I was so lucky because my publisher presented me with two covers and they were both really nice. One was of kind of a corporate office building glass and you could see through it and see a woman on one level and then another woman on another level. But then they showed me this and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's it. And, you know, my editor agreed too. But I mean, they were both really good, but this one was by far the favorite pick of everyone. Ooh, so there were two options. I kind of like the idea of the office because um, yeah. this involves the story of a husband and wife team who built their business together. And then Tish comes along and, uh, and as you said, they're at the IPO of selling this company. Now, this is interesting timing because, of course, anyone who's watching the news knows Bill and Melinda Gates just filed for divorce yesterday to perhaps the most famous husband and wife company building teams. Um, yeah. And and we don't know, you know, of course yours involves this 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 hot uh, executive assistant <laughs> fish, but right. what are your thoughts on, on this? Well, you know, the, the premise of the book came about when um, my husband and I <laughs> did run a business together for 10 years called Real Living Real Estate. And uh, we ended up selling it in 2009 to Berkshire Hathaway. And that allowed me to start writing novels, which has been amazing and far less stressful. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do, I feel for the Gateses because running a business, even if it's a, a a global <laughs> charity and then raising three kids it's still a lot of stress and the the way to power oftentimes in an organization is right in the middle trying to divide the two people at the top no matter whether they're married and when you're married it's even tougher so just from personal experience i it's tough <laughs> it's tough Exactly. So from personal experience, again, you and your husband building this company, raising four children whilst doing it, doing it very well. That is what generated this idea for 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 the Nelsons. OK, cool. Good to have that that insight. Um, thank you so much. Drew saying thank you so much for answering his question. Leslie's telling us she's watching from Canada. So now we've gone international. We're international. I love that. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, Leslie. Anissa says she loves a diabolical character, and this book sure has some. Who was the hardest character to write and why? Ooh, Anissa, great questions as always. Give us the Gosh, hardest character. You know, um, I guess I would say Kate was the hardest character to write because, I mean, everybody knows the, the kind of traditional story of the, the old, um, um, guy leaving his wife for a younger woman. Mm -hmm. And so that I didn't want it to feel cliched. And Kate's a very accomplished woman. She had the idea for their company. She, you know, she's very smart, very successful. So I didn't, I wanted her to be uh, fully developed and I didn't want people to underestimate her as well. Oh, so that made her the toughest. That's so interesting. I would have said Ashlyn or Tish. Mm. Wow. Well, Who like Tish, Tish, was, to write? Tish was really fun to write. I mean, Tish is just a great, fun character. She's very over the top, very self-confident. And I don't know, I had a blast writing Tish. Ashlyn was really fun too. I I don't know why. I, I, yeah, so I would say Kate, because you, when you're writing a domestic suspense, you don't want to give away too much about character, but you want everybody to have their own distinct voice. So hopefully, hopefully that worked. What was it like to write John, to write a male? I mean, who knows what those guys are thinking, Kara? Who I know. knows what those guys are thinking? It's, it's funny because I hadn't written from a male perspective until I wrote Best Day Ever. And that's first person narrator all the way through in this guy named Paul's uh, voice. And he's a pretty creepy guy. So I think he just burst the floodgates open for me on male characters. So I've been having fun writing from a male perspective as well. Do you have male first readers? Are they ever like, Carrie, you got this wrong. This isn't how dudes think. Well, I will I'll tell you, my, my husband, you know, he'll read for me if I ask him to. And I wrote a couple of romance series. And when I first got started writing romance, I was trying to, uh, you know, not like, uh, you know, closed door. I wasn't just the build up to this, you know, sex scene. And so I had this alpha male guy and I was writing this dialogue and I showed it to my husband. He just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. So I've been working on my uh, dialogue game, not for romance, but for you now domestic suspense. And yeah, I think it's really fun to be in the male perspective. You know what? I'm writing a male for the, so I'm writing a multiple POV as well. And I'm writing a male for the first time. And I found myself having those th same thoughts like, 
you know, maybe they don't strut around saying how manly they are, Kara. <laughs> you no, know, it's it is funny because you have to. Yeah, and I I have this whole cachet of really bad, terrible, bad um, bosses, male bosses in the back of my mm. subconscious that I can draw on at any. So you know, that's one good thing about having all of those horrible male bosses. Okay. Okay. Oh, and Nisa's saying she was thinking Tish was hardest too. See, and Nisa, you and me, we get it. Um, yeah. Oh, good question from Hallmark. How many hours a day do you write? Yeah. What's a day in your writing life like? Do you rise with the sun? Do you flow to your desk? Do the words just pour <laughs> out of you? Or are you are you hemming, weighing it? Are you clawing your way for every word, Kara? Fill us in. Oh, Sarah, that's so funny. Um, okay. Well, you know, I am not a morning person, so you will not find me singing with the birds at dawn. Okay, good. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I, you know, I've learned over the years that your muse is a gift and a, um, a little sensitive. So I don't want to push her. Like I hate yeah. pushing her all the time. So I don't get myself a word count or anything like that. But if the story's flowing and if I'm in my office and if I could start writing like by one o'clock, kind of this time of the day is when I wake up and my characters wake up. Uh, that's when I like to be writing. Exactly. Me too. Some of these morning people come on here and they're like, I get up like I've had people tell me they I think, you know, they get up at three and four a.m. or five a.m. I'm like, the only time I'm up is when I'm still up like, right. I'm up at three. Like, what are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. And I can't go late into the night. I just can't. The morning stuff. Uh -uh. Yeah. No, cannot do it. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Trisha. Welcome, Nancy. Welcome, everybody. Um, oh, Hallmark saying they're watching from Topsfield, Massachusetts. Can't wait to get into this one. Love the cover too. Hallmark, you and me, we are just like totally loving this cover. It's so sexy, isn't it? it um, is. Oh, good. Leslie's saying she's not a morning person either. Good. Join the nine morning club. <laughs> Um, let's get, uh, Sharon saying she used to go to early, but now she stays up late to do the high five, Sharon. Me too. <laughs> I am <laughs> staying up late. Kara, let's get into some of the praise. So Kirkus reviews, and they are, I think the New York Times said they are reliably cantankerous, uh, and grumpy. <laughs> they said that you hit the ground running and never stop. The next wife is so much fun that you'll be sorry to see it end with a final pair of zingers, the guiltiest of guilty pleasures. Wow. Congratulations on that rave review from Kyrgyz. Give us a sneak peek. How do you keep the story? You know, how do you hit the ground running and never stop? Did you ever get to a point where you were like, oh, this is lagging a little bit. I better pick up the pace or the ideas just keep coming. What's that like? Well, I'm a pantser. So that means I kind of write by the seat of my pants. And so I think, and, and I've also that my last two books were um, one narrator all the way through. And that's harder because you have to hide things in domestic suspense. And if you have only one point of view, it's harder to hide things. So I found with this book, it was so great because when one of my characters was going to give something away before I wanted them to, I would just stop <laughs> stop talking and add a new character's perspective. So that really, I think, really helped keep the book moving. Oh, that's so interesting. So you so you use the multiple POVs as a tool to to both rein yourself in and build the suspense. Very cool. I hadn't yeah. thought of it like that. Yeah. Um, oh, Hallmark is saying thank you so much for answering um, all those questions. Oh, my gosh. We love questions. Keep the questions going here. Um, Publishers Weekly raved this gripping psychological thriller from Ruda offers a refreshing setup. Ruda keeps the reader guessing as the plot takes plenty of twists and turns. Suspense fans will get their money's worth. Again, high praise from Publishers Weekly. Now, how do you do if you're a pantser? So just for everyone in the audience, there's basically writers group themselves into two groups, either plotters like Jeff Devers, who we've had on the on the uh, on the show, who spends six to eight months plotting out his plot is sometimes 180 pages. He spends eight hours a day rigorously plotting. Some of us like pantsers see where the story takes them. They go with the flow. They're flowing along like Kara over there. So Kara, how do you work in those twists then? Do you just let it evolve? I mean, if you, if that's what, what do you ever, do you ever find yourself in a dead end alley when that happens? Walk us through that. You know, it's, it's so fun. And I, I'd say the first draft for me is the most fun as a pantser because your characters, I mean, by definition kind of take over. And so they, I've been so fortunate because they haven't led me astray. If you kind of mm. listen to where they want, where they want to go, which sounds very odd, I realize because it's mm. all up in my head. But yeah, this this uh, I didn't really get into a corner with any of these guys. But like I said, sometimes they wanted to keep talking in their point of view too much, which would have given away twists before they came. 
Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Let's get over to Facebook. Leslie from Canada is saying, who are or were your writing inspirations in terms of authors? Kara, who it? Spill it. Spill it. Yeah, spill it. yeah. I mean, I always say all the way back to third grade, uh, Make Way for Ducklings. It was my, yeah. my favorite book. And I used to live in, in Massachusetts too, in Lincoln. And we, my teacher there in third grade said to write to who you wanted to become. And so I wrote to Robert McCloskey and he wrote me back. I know it was so exciting is like little Kara and I opened his letter and he's like, thank you for writing. I'm an illustrator, not an author. Better luck next time, but good luck. You don't really like <laughs> nice, but you know. So he was my first author, but he's really an illustrator that I like. And then I went through my whole Emily Dickinson period, which I still like. I mean, there's so many authors. Uh, I, I love Southern Lit too. I went to college in the South and I love like Eudora Welty and Shirley Jackson and all the kind of simmering creepiness there. And of course I have my great Gatsby. I mean, I, you know, I think to me, the joy of reading, the joy of books is to read widely and often and to, uh, you know, I, I, I'm drawn to domestic suspense world because that's where I write and the, I've always been a fan of, but I also love, I just love books. I love that. And for Anissa, who's watching from down South in South Carolina, where'd you go to college in the South? I went to Vanderbilt. Very cool. In Nashville. Mm -hmm. In Nashville, excellent. Anissa, our Southern Bell, is saying, I stay up too late reading, but I also have to be at school at 6.30, so I stay up late and get up early. My God, Anissa, you got to rest yourself. My, <laughs> You've got to get that rest. You've got to let your cells regenerate. Right. Uh, maybe you're a super sleeper. You don't need any sleep, you lucky, lucky lady. Um, Sharon would like to know, when you're not writing, what is your favorite genre to read? Great question, Sharon. I mean, do you stick only in thrillers? Do you, when you say you read widely and often, what sort of things are you reading widely and often these days? Yeah, you know what I've been having fun with is historical fiction. So um, I can't wait to read Pam Jenoff's new, new one that came out today. And uh, The Four Winds, Chris and Hannah, that was amazing. I was fascinated by the Dust Bowl. My grandma lived through the Dust Bowl. So I remember her telling me stories about it. So anyway, so I, I love to mix it up, but, but I will like say if a new domestic suspense comes out, I'm like on it. <laughs> I love, exactly. I love that. Uh, speaking of which, Mary Kubica says, in the next wave, two women go ruthlessly head to head. Kara Ruda knows how to create the perfect diabolical characters that we love to hate. Equally smart and savage. Oh, I love the use of the word savage. This is a <laughs> lightning fast read. Congratulations on that amazing blurb. Mary's coming on the show May 18th. So everyone tune in for that. That must have felt incredibly good to get a, re to get a blurb like that. Mary's incredible. Her books are incredible. I can't wait for the next one. And she, I mean, she's so generous with her time. She gives so many blurbs and she's on my cover with that blurb. So I really appreciate it. But yeah, it feels amazing. It's such a great community, the writing community. Um, yeah. So it makes me smile. The rating community is great, especially I have to say in the mystery and thriller, having segued over here from other from another genre, I actually couldn't believe how nice people are. I was thinking, is this yeah, what's the, what, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> drug? I know, I know. It really is. It's been the most welcoming group of women mostly and some men too, but the most welcoming group I'll never forget at my first um, VoucherCon in Toronto when Best Day Ever came out. I'm just like, what do I do? You know, wandering around by myself in the first 10 minutes I was there, Heather Gudenkoff came over and said, hey, do you want to have lunch? I'm like, really? <laughs> like, you know, like the new girl in the room. And yeah, was, I mean, everybody's been fabulous. Oh, uh, Heather Gudenkoff, I just was texting or just messaging with her. She was on the show last June. She's coming on again in January. I love her. She's absolutely amazing. amazing. Um, oh, and another good question coming in from Facebook. Anissa, Kara, have you read Nick? Four Wins is an amazing book. I haven't read Nick. But Four Winds is an amazing book. I love that. I'll have to check yeah. out Nick. Very cool. Speaking of praise from past guests, Julie Clark. I'm just going to pop this up because it's a big one. Yeah. Is Ruta's talent for making readers question everything um, and everyone shines through on every page of her propulsive new thriller, The Next Wife. Her narrators are sharp and unpredictable, each one with a tangle of secrets to unravel. The Next Wife will leave you tense and gasping with a chilling twist you won't see coming. Amazing praise from Julie Clark, who herself is amazing. Um, She's amazing. Mm -hmm. what yeah, The Last Flight. Oh, so good. 
so, so good. I did so not see good. that ending coming for sure. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, with a tangle of secrets, since you are a pantser, did, did the, do did the characters <laughs> just sort of tell you their secrets or, I mean, how do you, how do you give them a tangle of secrets to unravel? And that's the, that's the crazy thing. I think about talking about books as a pantser because I don't have an 180 page character overview. So yeah. when they come to life, they, typically come pretty fully formed and they so they have their own secrets when they arrive on the page hopefully in the story of course like subsequent drafts add to the texture and depth and probably add more secrets as well but i mean i guess probably i'd say when my characters are auditioning for parts in my next book they know they better have secrets <laughs> when they come <laughs> to the show Okay, Kara runs a tight ship. If you ain't got a secret, don't bother come knocking. You could not be in my book. Sorry. Yeah. You're not you have to be a little out. diabolical and a little <laughs> sneaky. I love it. Okay, that's that's what her one ad says. Her yeah. personal ad says <laughs> wanted characters must be diabolic and sneaky, if not, need not apply. I love right. it. Hallmark <laughs> would like to know have you always been a writer? Great question. You know, I have um, in some form or another, but not writing novels. So I, I graduated from Vanderbilt with an English degree and jumped into journalism and did my cover reporting experience, which I loved, and then wrote for magazines and then segued into my Darren Stevens of Bewitch career, which is advertising and marketing and worked for a bunch of ad agencies, ended up at a Inc. 100 firm and franchiser called Stanley Steamer. I was the first woman vice president of marketing there. And then from there, joined my husband and we created Real Living, the business I was talking about earlier. That all said, <laughs> my first book, wasn't until I was asked to write, well, I wrote an outline for the American Marketing Association, which ended up being sold to Wiley for women entrepreneurs. So a book called Real You Incorporated, Eight Essentials for Women Entrepreneurs and a nonfiction book at that, which I never imagined writing a business book, but there I did. And yeah, so then I traveled the country talking to women about putting your passion into action and living the life of your dreams. And I realized I hadn't written the novel that I always wanted to write. So I finally started, yeah, like 12 years ago. Oh my God, Carrie, you've had like 25 different lives. That's so cool. I but I feel like all of that experience and all of that knowledge and all of those characters, all of those real life people that you've interacted with must be infusing themselves in different ways into your stories. All the, all that, right? Do you feel that way or not so much? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think when people say, write what you know, it's it's not just like literal. It's actually all those experiences you've had and they sift through your particular brain in the way that you process things. And then it's all sitting there waiting to be tapped into for when you write your next story. Oh, I love that. Hallmark saying loves that as well. Yay. Very cool. Um, Wendy Walker, another incredible um, author who was on the show um, in September, she said, one man, two wives, Kara Ruta has masterfully created cutting twists and sharp narration that take you on an unexpected and delicious journey that will leave you with a gasp, devious and fun. The next wife should be the next book you read. And everybody, don't forget to grab your copy today through our special partnership with bookshop.org where you can support independent bookstores. Um, and, and they need our love because you know what? Almost one a week has gone out of business since the pandemic. So if we want to have books to browse and aisles to, to peruse, we've got to support those indie bookstores. So give them some love today and get this deliciously devious, as Wendy Walker <laughs> said, devious book um, by Kara. Kara, ex excellent. Uh, welcome, Marilyn. Good to have you here. Carol, what do you want people to experience when they spend their hours or perhaps days, their weekend, uh, weekends or weeks, however long some of us are slower readers than others? What do you want people to walk away from this book with a sense of? I mean, hopefully it kept you up past your bedtime and kept you reading quickly. That's the best compliment when somebody says, oh, my gosh, I couldn't put it down. So hopefully that happens for you. Uh, and I also I tend to use kind of dark humor to maybe keep you guessing or maybe let give my characters a way of not saying what they're really thinking. So they'll try to distract you with dark humor. So if you chuckle a little bit too, then that makes me happy as well. <laughs> I love that. And I, it's something about just seeing this very sweet, lovely blonde in her pink jacket. <laughs> It's looking so innocent, just looking so, so lovely, innocent. her elderly dog napping by her side, but talking yes. about all these devious, dark secrets. <laughs> something about the disparity of the, let's put her this again. Something about the disparity about that is just wildly entertaining me. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I know. I actually, when I first started writing suspense, uh, one of my women's fiction author friends said to me, she, we were at lunch and she's like, oh, you, you, you write happy, light things. I'm like, no, I really, you know, no, I really don't. And actually the goodbye year, my last uh, women's fiction had started down that dark path. And I told her one of the plot twists and she spit her coffee at me. She's like, you don't write like <laughs> I, I actually do. And I love it. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Note to self, wait till people swallow before you tell them your next right before you tell them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love this question. What advice do you have for aspiring writers? Because, you know, so many of us have those secret desires in our hearts. What do you think, Kara? Yeah, I always did too. So I, I guess what I would say first and foremost is you have to just do it, just start. Because mm -hmm. I, I was just talking to a friend of mine last weekend and she's like, I, okay, I've got the book idea. I'm like, you've had the book idea since I've known you. <laughs> the key is to sit down and try. And I think there's like that Ah, uh, gosh, the hesitation, the trepidation about putting those first few words down. But once you get going, just go. You know, it's it's it really is such a magical process if you allow yourself the time and the space, and, and like I said, be kind to your muse, and just trust that you have that story in you, and just start. And I'd also say persistence. Don't give up. I love that advice. Thank you so much, and thank you for the great question. Um, Carol, what's your writing process look like after you, well, first of all, how long does it take you to write the soup to nuts? How long did it take you to write this book? Okay. Here's what I, I've been starting to give this answer because it's true. So a lifetime, <laughs> because like I was telling you before, I think that all of those things that you've lived through and done and all the wisdom that you have all come out through your story. But Literally, um, gosh, I, I guess about a year from when you finish your first draft to getting it to the editor and then getting the edits back. And I used to be the grumpiest uh, receiver of editorial letters, <laughs> but yeah. I'm getting better at it now because I had this little perfectionist streak. So I felt like it was an affront to my, yeah, to my story. And when, in fact, they're just trying to make it better and trying to help you become a better writer because you do, you become better each book, hopefully, hopefully people agree. And uh, yeah, so I guess, yeah, that's my answer in a rambling way. <laughs> I <laughs> love that. A hallmark saying thank you so much for the great answer. Anissa saying yes, you've got to start because you can't edit a blank page. Anissa totally agree. Um, so once you handed it in, Kara, after that lifetime slash one year, then you got your edits back. You're cultivating not being resistant. You're taking that advice. You're taking a step back and then yeah. going into it. yeah. What's that process look like? How much back and forth was there? Were there any major changes? Um, oh, this is a funny, a funny story about this book. Uh, so when I when I first wrote it, when I pants it along, uh, I had all the characters that are in there now, and then I turned it into my editors, I mean agents. I'm sorry, and so my agents are like, we just don't think Ashlyn's point of view is necessary. And I'm like, Ashlyn and I were like, are you kidding me? But anyway, I'm like, all right, you guys are the experts. So I went back, took out all of Ashlyn's point of view. We submit it to my editor. <laughs> The editor buys it. She's like, the only overall note I have is we really need to hear from the daughter. I'm like, I thought so too. So I was all excited. So anyway, then I got to add her all back in and you would say, oh, of course you kept all of those cut parts, right? No, because I'm a pantser. Oh. So <laughs> so I got to rewrite Ashlyn, which kind of makes her my fondest character in a sense, because I got to look at her really deeply twice. This <laughs> is the first time she was in and the second time. Yeah. Oh my God. So you yeah. seem so, so, you know, at ease with it. So, so, so calm. So Zen, I think I might've screamed. I might've, I might've thrown something. I was so happy she was back in actually, because I really wanted her to be in there and it felt natural to me because that's the way it kind of came out in the first place. So I was happy. I mean, maybe a smidge frustrated, but you know, my agents got the book deal. So I love them. And um, there you have it. Now, when, but when it's never that simple to just delete Ashlyn out, because of course they all, it's a domino effect. So if you, you know, something that she says is something that Tish might refer back to four chapters later and Kate yeah. references six chapters later. So then it's undoing, I mean, you pull that thread and so much comes apart. It must've taken you, oh, Sharon's saying the exact same thing. Sharon, you're reading my mind. It must've taken, I mean, that's <laughs> been a lot of work. It certainly would have been helpful at that stage to have an outline, wouldn't it? <laughs> So that's something else I'm sort of learning that perhaps, just perhaps, that I will write a loose outline, not a 180-page outline, but maybe just a loose 
outline with plot points and give it to my agents first and say, get them to say thumbs up and then write the whole thing next time. But yes, yeah, it was to your point, it was, it is untangling because if you write as a pantser, you can't edit as a pantser. You have to, you have to have all those plot lines going and yeah. Anyway, so it was, it was a lot of work. How long did it take you yeah. to rip her out and put her back in? I know I'm so bad at timing. I mean, all of that was still within that year that I told you. So wow. Wow. Yeah. Somewhere Jeffrey Deaver is just cackling with joy. Like, ha, 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 ha. I, here I am with my outline. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I know. I know. And I did for my next, for my next book. I I'm like, all right, darn it. I'm going to just give him, but I just did the kind of the characters and the plot points. It's not even two pages. So to get there, like sign off on. Oh my gosh. I love Everyone it. Listen. Yeah. Well, Kara, Kara, we are having so much fun, but I just looked at the clock and my God, we're almost out of time. So guess what guys, it's time for the lightning round. So get your last questions in. We have four and a half minutes left with Kara. So get your questions in about writing, about the next wife, about anything that's hanging out in your brain, any confessions you're dying to make. Now is the time. This is the place. Let them all loose. Kara, I'll start. Excuse me. What are you working on next? I am working on the final edits for my next book, which comes out in January. It's called Somebody's Home. And I'm really excited about that. Yay. So what, I'm sorry, what stage are you up to? Edit? Well, I just turned in my final um, edits. So I'm waiting for cover art and yeah, the proofreading and all that. Yeah. Yay. It's going to be hard to top this cover because this cover is so good. I know. I hope the same artist is busy working on it because I do. I love that cover. Oh my goodness. What, yeah. uh, yeah, exactly. I, it, it, I mean, it is so gorgeous. And you know what, is it just me or does that look a little like Katie Holmes? I know it kind of does. All right. Maybe she's an option in it and do the movie. Because remember she was the second wife of Tom Cruise. First we had Nicole Kidman, then we had Katie Holmes. So I was like, oh my God, is this, <laughs> is there a subliminal? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <That's funny. laughs> against, uh, because he's in that that crazy church or whatever thing. So I was like, Oh my God, is this a, is there a secret message here? I was ready. I was looking. No, no message. <laughs> Kara, what is, what was the one fictional character that you would like to play yourself? Fictional character. Your book like, or others? Golly. You know, I, I wouldn't want to play anybody because I don't like being on screen. <laughs> To be quite honest, I'm like the happiest having a writer's life, which is behind the scenes life. So the, the, my youngest son is a singer songwriter and he loves to perform and act and do all of that kind of stuff. So he got all of those genes, not for me. <laughs> I, like when you asked me that question, I got like palpitations because I can't even imagine acting. So anyway, thank you for that. But sorry, I, no one. <laughs> Where do you come up with your character names? How did you come up with Kate, Tish, Ashlyn, and John? Yeah, and that's weird too because they come with those names, and I mean, sometimes they're they're kind of boring names. Sometimes, sorry to anybody named Kate, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> they just kind of come in to life too. And the only thing I have to watch is that I, if I've used a name in a previous book, because I went through a whole Melanie stage, so I wanted to name every character Melanie for some reason. So I had to I had to watch that. So. To not repeat myself. Oh, and did that and did that just come to you, or how? how why Melanie? <laughs> no, because one of my beta readers is like, "Why do you have another Melanie?" <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. That, I don't know why. Because I use. I think Melanie was in um, in the mirror. Maybe I don't know. Hopefully, it's not a Kate. I don't know. I'm bad at remembering character names, but um, oh yeah. Okay, enough about my. Do you have any weird writing rituals? So Jeffrey Devers writes, he closes all the curtains, all the windows. He writes by tactile feel in a dark, dark room. Uh, Saul Lelchuk writes to French um, pop songs. Lissy Thomas writes to ABBA. Christina McDonald writes to pounding house music that, sh that, j that jars the walls. What, do you have any weird writing rituals? Do you write any music? Well, I'm feeling kind of normal again now. So... Um <laughs> That made me feel better. Thank you. Um, no, I, I, I typically have a dog either behind me on the floor like this, or he also, that's Tucker. He likes to also be up on my desk. So I, I guess I have, I have to have my puppies near me, which is comforting and kind of fun. And then really just iced tea. That's my big uh, go-to or, or if it's cold outside, you know, but tea, 
that's kind of key T and a lot of post-it notes. Like if you could see my desktop, it's covered with just, and that's because I think answers you'll think of something and then you need to remember it for later and you don't have that outline thing to go by. So <laughs> exactly. I live for post-it notes. Anissa is saying, thank you so much, ladies. Anissa, great to have you. Last question from Leslie. She said, do you write purge and forget what you have written? Do you have to go back and see what you said? Great question. What's that like? Um, on, yeah, I never go back when I'm writing a, the first draft. I just keep carrying on going forward. And that's kind of what I would say to anybody who hasn't started that just start, you know? And so getting that first draft down is really important. And then going through afterwards, once it's in the second draft phase, then, then you might purge or delete stuff or a whole character <laughs> sometimes. Oh. Very cool. So you do not edit or re or re look re look at it until it's done. You just plow through straight ahead. Yeah, exactly. Oh, very cool. Very cool. See, we like to have these sneak peeks, these behind the scenes, the hashtag BTS behind the scenes. Um, all right, everybody, we are out of time, and that's a wrap. But don't forget to buy your copy of this amazing sexy book the next wife and you can get it right from your favorite independent bookstore from one of my yes this is one of my favorite mystery and thriller themed bookstores murder by the book where a good crime is had by all i just dropped the link in That's the comments so you can support an independent bookstore a mystery murder and thriller themed bookstore i love them it's in the comments your favorite independent bookstore or bookshop.org but get your copy of this book today everyone saying thank you so much leslie thank you for the questions we're getting tons of hearts up everybody thank you um Thank you so much, Harmark. Saying great interview, great to have you all. Thank you for your great comments, Kara. Thank you for for joining us here today, and everybody. I will see you next Tuesday right here. Have a great week. <laughs>